have Mr. K.V. Subramanian, who is the former Chief Economic Advisor. He is with us on the show. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Always a pleasure to have you. I'm sure you must have heard about the SBI report. Uh, I hope you've had the, the opportunity to go through it. But the moot point that this report makes is that the, the income levels are rising for the middle class. And this is based on the data that was provided by the income tax return or the income tax records that have really come in. Your preliminary thoughts on this report, how valid is this assertion in your expertise? Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, look, uh, we have to first uh, factor in that any prediction about the future um, is often uh, um, affected by some uncertainty. Right. Uh, I think with that, with, with that caveat, I would say that um, the uh, projections that are being made by the SBI report are, uh, are, are, are quite reasonable. Um, one thing that uh, I know very well, having tracked um, the work that Soumya Kanti Ghosh does, he does use, uh, you know, brings in new data sets um, to bring in, you know, fresh perspectives. Um, I'll try and complement, um, you know, what what uh, uh, the SBI report says uh, using some uh, thoughts of my own, but from right. a macroeconomic side. Hmm. If you look at it from a macroeconomic side, um, India's, uh, you know, in the next 20, 25 years, uh, India is an incredibly sweet spot from the perspective of the demographics. You know, hmm. in a situation where China's population is going to be declining in the next 20, 25 years, the advanced economies all have aging population. That's right. India is going to be in this incredible sweet spot for the next 20, 25 years. Hmm. Now, um, ma many people will contend that that can become a liability. But the steps that have been taken, especially on manufacturing sector growth, because manufacturing sector growth is incredibly important for job creation in the economy. Hmm. Um, and in the next 25 years, you know, that will be a big driver of job creation and thereby the creation of middle class. Hmm. I'll give you one example. If you take, for instance, Detroit uh, in the state of Michigan in the United States, you know, the entire city was created by jobs that were provided by the three okay. automobile majors. Um, so in a similar way, when manufacturing sector jobs will get created, you know, the demographics, uh, the sweet spot that we have will indeed become a dividend. Uh, and overall, we can expect about 7% growth, 65 to 7% growth, you know, in real terms going forward. Um, and, yeah. and that, uh, you know, uh, and, and that will make a big difference, you know, when you're talking about 25 years, because the power of compounding actually makes a big difference there. The power of compounding, absolutely. And the demographic dividend that India has, that's also one thing that the report talks about. But I want you to touch upon these aspects, not, not inviting a pol political comment in any way. But one of the key criticism of, of this growth story or the people who are skeptical about India's growth story is that you don't have data to argue how many people you have pushed out of poverty or the fact that the incomes have risen along with inflation. That's a factor that needs to be accounted into. Could you help us understand the correlation between inflation and the rising incomes and how should that be understood? See, here I think we can speak with very good data because when you look at inflation, we get monthly monthly data. Hmm. Uh, if you look at the average, you know, average inflation from 1960 to 2020, that average inflation was 7.2%. Um, just as a comparison, you know, United States, during the same period, 60-year period, their average inflation was 2%. That's right. Now, uh, be because of the way in which India handled the economy, and, you know, I was incredibly privileged to be part of that team that actually uh, was able to, you know, th think through this, uh, India's inflation actually is less than its historical average. You know, I do keep in mind uh, the re latest, latest print that has come 7.4%. You know, it's a lot more because of food inflation. But overall, if you look at the trends, our inflation has actually been much lower than the advanced economies, which are facing anywhere between two and a half to four times the historical average inflation. Okay. And this is with a growth, and this is with a growth that is actually likely to be of seven plus five percent plus. You know, uh, in 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 in, in FY twenty three. So when you project yeah. from this going forward, yeah. and and let me come to the jobs part, and I think exactly. that is something. Exactly. Yeah. That, there is a there is a lot of you know uh, bad um, you know uh, a sort of narrative making on on employment in particular in India. I would go by the uh, PLFS data because that is official data 
you know, which has been, uh, um, up the, the methodology has really been approved. Unfortunately, a lot of people comment using the extremely unreliable, noisy CMI data. If you go by the PLFS data, and we covered this in the economic surveys that I wrote as well, That's you right. know, from uh, from 2017, 18 to 2019, 20, yeah. the number of number of people who are salaried workers, you know, or are drawing a, 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 you know, are in the formal sector, you know, drawing salary uh, a, a salary yeah. that had increased by almost by 15 million, um, yeah. and and you know, of that, about yes. uh, seven million was was females. Which was a you know growth of about thirty percent and eight million among among males. So you know on the employment, I think for various reasons the You've narratives well. are actually you know are 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 very poor. Uh, but when you look at the data, the yeah. data yes, mis a lot misinformed. And I think misinformed and oftentimes there are a few who actually, you know, unfortunately also want to sort of push the wrong narratives. But the data speaks for itself. And I, yes. I also would mention that if you look at the PLFS data again, you know, uh, post-COVID, there has been very good recovery, you know, uh, except for females where the recovery was not very V-shaped. Right, right. So the, the decline was, was, was steep. But then grow, gone, gone up. But you know, the, the if you and, look at all the measures, and who unemployment better than trade, you to remind the political parties or the people or anybody who's loosely commenting about the force of data, Mr. Subramanian, it's always very enlightening and it's always a pleasure to have you on the broadcast. Thank you so much for putting all the details into perspective.